Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I just have a short video, but it is about those uh, RF power dividers, power splitters that I did a video about a few weeks ago. And I found something very alarming about these actually. And I hope you didn't buy one because you watched my video. If you did, check if yours is good or not. So I talked a little bit about uh, these uh, resistor splitters. These are, I think a loss theoretically 6 dBs. These were like uh, 3 dB, I think. These were also 3 dB. These are a lot better, of course, than the resistance also because of the channel isolation between. And then I found this one. This is a, looked like a very good brand that I ignored a few big, big red flags. So I removed that sticker. And I found out that it's actually from uh, mini circuits. And then the price is actually very cheap because these cost about 100, 150 somewhere. And, but they can do 10 watts. I don't need 10 watts, but yeah, why not if you can get that for that uh, price? That would have seemed nice. This was a red flag one. Why would I put a sticker on top of a perfectly good brand? Because it will probably sell better if they don't put their own sticker on top. Then I found a second red flag, and I'm not sure because I bought mine like four years ago, I think, if that text was there. And now I scroll down, and I'm also not sure if it was this store. I just found the same looking one. Here it already said something in uh, Dutch as, well, it's less good than expected. And then I go further down. Well, this, this looks all very good. Now frequency, perfect for GPS. It is for between a gigahertz to 1.8. Isolation between the channels is 32. And I think the loss is between 7 and 10 dB because it's a split in four. But then it says here, it's used. The, it looks a bit from the outside because it is used because of scratches. And then it says 100% tested for DC resistance. So they measured if it was 50 ohms or not. They never did any check if it was RF good or not. And that is what I'm gonna do now because I found out something seriously wrong. So I have the spectrum analyzer set up just a full scale, zero to 3.2. I'm gonna use the tracking generator. And of course I have here one cable for the tracking generator. I have now a SMA connector of course. And I want to make sure that the cable losses are not taken into account. So we get the tracking generation uh, on. Level is minus 20. That's okay. I can put it to zero, but it doesn't matter because we're going to do a reference. So now it's set to zero. So the cable losses are now all set to zero compared to the minus dB, but we just compensate that. So if I put a reference line, of course, that is then minus 20 dB, a bit lower, but this was the cable wash right here. Instead of the plug in, we're going to do the splitter. This is a resistive splitter, so that uh, means it is theoretically like 6 dB, probably a bit more. And the channel isolation is bad because it's resistors, so we probably need to use a terminator, but I will try that first without. This is with the unbalanced, only one connector on the splitter. And we can see in the worst place, it is in minus 12. So that's even a lot, lot worse. And that is around uh, 1.5, 1.4. Let's put a terminator because it is designed to a 50-50 on both sides. Because we just know this design is very sensitive for unbalanced. And let's see. Yeah, now it is. Well, it's not 6, but it is uh, around minus 8, I would think. And here, in these frequencies, it could be even around 6. So this is usable. Not bad. Let's get that other one. And I will get to my four splitter, but I just wanted to show what we are looking at. These ones are theoretically not 6, because they have this RF magic. They would have around 3. A little bit more and of course we can try with and without and then later I try 
this one that looks even more fancy and maybe works better so that also doesn't look better look look at there I, this frequency 1718 it is almost touching zero wow and here we are also around 560b this works better than the resistive and what if we put the terminator on the other channel look at this when you balance it better it could indeed be 340b look at that all the way up to uh, 1.7 megahertz 1.7 gigahertz not bad so this splitter is indeed better than a resistive splitter so take that out let's get to the other one this looks a lot more fancy so maybe it um, it will all the dips that you probably had with this one because it's only it will be picked up by all the others so let's see I expect it to be more flat because they do more trickery here and we could try with and without oh wow this looks super flat <laughs> look at this and yeah it's 4 or 5 dB all the way up to and it says it's designed up to 4 gigahertz and indeed this is 3.2 my uh, spectrum analyzer doesn't go much higher but look at it it is near flat this is a good splitter and now we can add the resistive load 50 ohms on the other output and it flattens out even more wow and now this splitter I will quickly open it so you know it is indeed that one and it has a lot more of this RF magic with all these things look at that it looks very fancy but there is a reason that they put this sticker on top they were probably replaced because they were not good and I really didn't find out until I started testing on the spectrum analyzer because weird enough it did sort of function but um, yeah it had very high losses so let's see well look at this it is just a minus 30 db attenuator and let me just connect my little SMR connector in between so you can see I'm not doing anything fancy so I go back to the cables connected directly you see this is directly I will put it again on the filter this is and I'm connected now to the filter this is port 1 connecting to port 2 port 2 seems to be still minus 30 dB but fractional better port 4 so clearly they did do the resistance test and that should have raised a huge red flag for me but they didn't and I just wanted to test it so now I have super flat minus 30 db 4 port attenuator so that was really bad and I cannot return it of course after four years and the sticker of course should have raised a huge uh, red flag as I said before it is indeed what it is so then what is the alternative well I found another one and even with the welcomes deal it is now 19 euros I think I bought it two weeks ago and it was about 27 which still is a very nice price if you compare that to the 100 of the mini circuits but is this one any good so we will also test this one and well it is a little bit broader it's from 700 all the way up to 2700 but this is 
still great for a GPS. SWR, it's reasonable good uh, 50 watt of power, that's a lot. And here they are a little bit more realistic. Well, they say 7.6 insertion. It is usually a bit more. You really need to think about between seven and, and between seven and ten, I think. And the channel isolation is 20 dB, which is good. Actually, a bit low because I think usually would be 30. But anyway, we are also going to test this. If this then is a good alternative for a passive splitter, it is a little bit bigger. This is the broken one. This is the other one, and it looks actually like good quality. It goes from 700 all the way up to 2.7 gigahertz and before i say it is good let's put it on the spectrum analyzer the setup is still here so it does look nicely built you can screw it to the wall if you want i put this label there was no label on top so is it even between 700 and 2.7 gigahertz i haven't looked inside it just arrived today but Already the connectors look very, very good. So, but it doesn't say anything because this one also looked very good and even very fancy inside. So, in the end, it is just what will it do on the spectrum analyzer. And oh, tight fit. It's also a good sign, and maybe with or without. A terminator on one of the channels. I probably need to do this one because in the end it is sort of this and this with another one here. So if it is unbalanced I probably need to put it here. Okay look at that. That is near flat. It looks at good. It's the smaller one. Only this is a four channel so theoretically it's 6, 7 dB. Usually in practice it is uh, between 7 and 10. But uh, it is actually doing that. Here we see a little dip, but this is, uh, let me get the start frequency uh, to 700, as they say on the uh, label. And then look at that. And it's at about 2.7, I think. And then we see it does that. It does that. And let's get the terminator on the channel is it then getting better oh yeah it's flattening out oh then i want to do all the channels with the terminator okay so now i put the terminator on channel three well that is the channel isolation it doesn't matter too much and on channel four and slight difference but look at this i get a marker look at that i put now a marker on 1.7 gigahertz and it says minus 6.4, 6. Point, really. So they don't lie on the specifications. It actually does that. If we go lower. Here we are at 7. Yeah, this is near the theoretical. That is amazing, actually. And in the higher frequency, of course, because then it can jump easily from port to port and the isolation probably also gets a little bit worse in those high frequencies but if we want to use it for satellite here yeah, somewhere with it this 1575 i think around here look at that 6.45 dB. So this is what it looks like with the terminators on it is indeed as i expected this one had a little bit of influence and this is another here, and this is probably like this, because then you have your 3 and a bit dB, and again, because you split again, like this. Only then with high quality. We can have a look inside. Okay, will it look uh, just as fancy as the other one inside? I hope I don't ruin the characteristic sticks by opening it. Because it is near perfect. How did they do it? Well, this one is simple. They just blow it up. Because this can do, I think, 10 watts. 
for transmitting and they probably did too much and then something burned and the only thing that is left over is the resistive uh, split and that's why you get this uh, 30 dB and it's super flat so it must be resistive I can't send it back because then I could have bought this one for that money. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, it doesn't even look that complicated. It is indeed very close to this one. I am actually super amazed how simple it looks on the inside and how well it works in practice because when we look at this one, it looks so much more complicated and even more sophisticated somehow and with the minimum means and, and when you look on the spectrum analyzer it actually works well we saw on the higher frequency it was not completely flat but it, it had a little uh, wiggle and maybe this one is more uh, would have been when it works it's maybe more flat and you need a little bit more of these in different sizes so if they edit a bit more maybe it would have been fractional better but really doing like below 7 dB it's really amazing in a four split so that was it passive four-way splitters sometimes you're lucky sometimes you're unlucky well it's very simple if you don't want any risk buy from the original brand from this one expect to pay above 100 dollars easily or uh, you can find it from other companies maybe but if you buy on aliexpress sometimes you are lucky sometimes you are not i was unlucky with this one i hope you were not unlucky buying it because you watch my videos uh, but now you know this one is indeed possible i will leave the link below and i'm actually surprised with how simple it looked inside and the result on the spectrum analyzer because it was below 7 db which is really amazing thank you for watching and hope to see you next time